Hi, my name is Constant Brand from the EA Communications team, and welcome to another episode of the EA Ask an Expert, where we talk with uh, one of our experts on a, on a briefing or a report that we've just recently published. And today we are uh, joined by Javier Esparo. Uh, welcome. Thank you for, for having me here. No problem. Time. And today we're talking about energy, and in particular, prosumers and energy system in Europe, and how citizens and businesses can contribute to Europe's energy transition. Uh, quite a hot topic uh, the last few months, uh, last year. Indeed. And uh, so certainly uh, it's, it's, it's something that uh, we're, we're working on a lot here at the EEA. Uh, perhaps uh, before I start, uh, if you have any questions or comments for Javier, please uh, jot them down in the comment section and uh, we'll make sure that uh, our expert sees them and hopefully we can have a discussion based on their questions or comments and uh, hopefully answer them as well. Uh, let's start with prosumers. Uh, what exactly are we talking about when we talk about prosumers? Well, the term prosumers is, is very broad. Um, so in, in, in the strictest sense, it comes from the combination of uh, producer, consumer, uh, applied to, to renewable energy in this case. <coughs> uh, but we take a wider uh, approach where we also consider other, other types of active uh, involvement into the energy system. Um, so now with new technological developments, it's not only producing energy, but it can also be, for example, uh, helping to stabilize the grid by using your own batteries or providing other sort of services to the grid. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the, the most the most uh, broad uh, type of, uh, of definition. And what kind of prosumers are there? I'm sure this... Well, the, the combinations are, are yeah. endless. I mean, they say there are as many prosumer models as prosumers themselves. Uh, but the, f the first distinction is whether they are individual or collective. So mm -hmm. individual, just like a family installing their own solar panels, for example. Or a collective could be an energy community, so people that get together and they together build a, a bigger uh, plant uh, or, or an energy cooperative. So there are many different different models there. Mm -hmm. And then also, depending on the actor, it can be citizens, but it can also be uh, small businesses or institutions. So then, and then th there are many different ways that they can organize themselves and the technologies they can use and so on. So then there is really, really a varied uh, landscape. Mm -hmm. And recently we published a report on prosumerism. Mm -hmm. uh, can you explain a little bit what it's about? Uh, well, yes. Uh, so this report uh, that we've been working over the last uh, so like a year and a half, mm -hmm. uh, so even before, uh, it became a, a very hot topic. <laughs> Um, uh, on, on this report, we look at the at actually what prosumers are, so the different models that are involved. Try to to dig into this categorization. We look at which benefits can they bring, how can they support the energy transition, but also what are the drawbacks, what are the barriers and the limitations. We also look into what uh, the people can do to become prosumers, <coughs> and uh, also importantly, which uh, policy developments can promote this or have been already in place, and what can be done to promote it. Okay. So okay. we'll look at it all from a European perspective. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll delve a bit into the detail. Of that. But again, if you have any questions or comments, please uh, jot them down on our LinkedIn feed or our Twitter feed, and even our Facebook feed if you like, and uh, we'll make sure that uh, we get to them. Um, so what are the key benefits of consumption compared to large-scale renewable energy plants. Mm -hmm. So what are we talking about here? Yeah, well, the, the benefits of uh, renewables in general, those are very well discussed already. So uh, we, we focus a bit more on, we just asked, like, what's the, the difference to just a large uh, you know, solar panel plant built by a, a utility company. And uh, here the benefits are, are multiple. In, if I have to choose uh, just a few of them, so one of them is the, the acceptance of the, by the population. So the the, the the public support for renewables is uh, stronger when the citizens are involved and when they benefit from it as well. Uh, as well, the, um, the protection for consumers, if they generate uh, most or part of their electricity themselves, they are less exposed to fluctuation mm -hmm. on energy prices than we see right now. Uh, the issue of land as well is starting to become increasingly, uh, increasingly problematic. So many prosumer models rely on rooftops, which is the Ennis land that's yeah. already built up. Yeah. So it, it does saves a lot of space. Uh, Indeed, uh, and also that prevents like the land that could be used for other other uses. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I would also like to 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 highlight the I think it's, it's quite a critical point. The fact that is uh, with prosumer we're able to mobilize funds that would not be otherwise available because most people don't use their uh, their household like uh, their energy the family savings for 
for renewable energy. But if, if it's your own solar panels, then you're mobilizing this money that would not be available otherwise. Mm -hmm. uh, like the large utility companies usually use other, other uh, funds. Sure. So this uh, promotes as well the energy transition and help us mobilize funds to get closer to the to, to that point. Now, I, what pops up in my head right away is, oh, the price of installing solar panels on my roof or something. What are the drawbacks of prosumerism? That's one of them. <laughs> In, uh, in many cases, particularly for individual consumers who want to install solar panels in the house, the, 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 the cost, the, the capital investment up yeah. front is, is substantial. Yeah. And uh, some of the helps provided are uh, afterwards. So then not everyone can afford, you know, six, seven, eight thousand euro to just uh, do the initial in installment, sometimes even more. So this can act as a barrier and it's also criticized that, that you know, some section of, uh, of society may not, uh, may not be able to access it. Uh, so then there are, of course, different things that can be done, uh, different uh, ways of, uh, of supporting prosumers uh, yeah. earlier on, or, or, or can also be uh, joining a collective because prosumers in an energy community. So this is an initial fee of 100 euro, which is far more affordable, and you can already start becoming a prosumer. Right. But yes, this upfront cost is one of the, of the limitations. Yeah. <coughs> then there is also the thing, that the issue of, of, uh, of cost effectiveness, building a big Power plant is, of course, more uh, efficient just because of economy of scales uh, than uh, doing many small ones. And uh, uh, this, once again, energy communities, uh, they can get together and get bigger projects, become cheaper. But in those cases, usually they're not on rooftop. So every you know, every model and every, every combination of factors have their pros and cons. Yeah, yeah. So this is just to, to, to name a, a couple of the, of the drawbacks. Yeah, yeah. And certainly that we're talking about scale here, and as you mentioned, the plant. Mm -hmm. This is obviously not going to solve the energy crisis we're in, so but it can help. It can indeed help. Yes, I mean it's not a silver bullet that is going to no. solve all the the energy crisis and the energy transition and climate change. Of course not, but uh, it is uh, it definitely helps uh, in the sense that well it, it helps to stabilize the, the the prices. It also helps to uh, increase the energy security of Europe. If we generate our own uh, energy, then we don't need to to import or we will we reduce the amount of fuels that we import from uh, other places. Also, this applies both for consumers and for large scale, yeah. you know, just more renewables. Necessary. And then, of course, the, the environmental benefits too. But I believe that um, the, the future and the system where we're going is more decentralized than what we have at the moment. Uh, and there will be a mix of large scale utility plants uh, in, in, and also more decentralized smaller ones. Mm -hmm. And for this, we also need a, a, sol a solid, a stable grid that is you know, smartly operated. Yeah, yeah. And how big of an impact can citizens, prosumers play in helping to reduce the negative impacts of the energy crisis, especially energy bills? Uh, well, uh, when, it, when it comes to the energy bills, uh, it, can be, it, can be, it can be pretty high. Um, but then, of course, it depends. Uh, like uh, everything on this, uh, on this field, it depends. Uh, depends on the country, depends on the amount of uh, sun that you have, depends on the public help uh, and, and financial support. But uh, we can talk that a family can save uh, perfectly like around a thousand euro per year in, uh, in installing the solar panels now with the current energy prices even more. Uh, but uh, there is also limitations as well. Uh, there is a huge demand. Now we were hearing some uh, anecdotal evidence uh, from people and also from from industry that they are having a huge demand that they cannot really cover at the moment, and then there is also the issue of um, a shortage of skills uh, in, in mm. many countries. There is a long waiting list to get qualified uh, people to, to to install the solar panels, mm. and, and here is where there is a big opportunity for professionals and also for um, uh, for countries to develop the curriculum. So while the potential is very high, it's not so easily uh, deployed like, instantly all across Europe. Yeah, and we're not just talking about solar panels, are we? It's, what, what other uh, well, technology? The solar, yeah, it's not only solar panels. I mean, solar panels is the technology of, of choice. And yeah. uh, th 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 there are some studies that say that technically it's feasible to, to cover a quarter of all the EU energy de electricity demand with just for strut or solar panels. Like, technically feasible doesn't mean that it's uh, yeah. economically feasible. Very possible, uh, and this uh, because it's modular and uh, and it's uh, and it's sort of easy to operate. Is the technology most most commonly used by prosumers, but not the only one. Uh, some energy communities they get together, they install also wind, um, even uh, some small hydro. Mm -hmm. And I also want to highlight the um, the issue of uh, district heating, 
because this is not typically the realm of prosumers, but one of the case studies we have in our report, actually using heat the, the district heating to heat their own their own town, okay. and it's uh, operated by uh, by an association of, of people yeah. of consumers. Yeah. So the, so the, and I, the, this is an aspect where we can still uh, grow substantially. Okay, uh, we're starting to get questions in, so that's great. Uh, again, if you have questions or comments, uh, please uh, get them into us, and we'll make sure that Javier uh, gets to them. Um, so uh, we talked about other technologies. Uh, what has the EU been doing in this area as far mm -hmm. as, as prosumerism and uh, to boost these initiatives? Yeah. Well, uh, there has been a knowledge by, by, the, by the EU policy for, for quite some time uh, on the request of the Renewable Energy Directive and also in the Electricity Directive that already defines some of the prosumer um, um, models or categories. Uh, such as the energy communities, or the all active, active citizens. There's a bit of overlapping between mm -hmm. different terms. Uh, but the recently, um, the Repower EU uh, plan has been the, the most ambitious proposal to promote uh, presumption. Uh, so here on this on this proposal, we're talking uh, the one uh, proposing to to uh, in, uh, install solar panels pretty much in every new building that's built, and the uh, solar rooftop initiative but also uh, facilitate the, the, the permitting, so cutting red tape, uh, put them all in a, in a more um, uh, level playing field to compare to, um, to utility or uh, so on. So, so here we're talking about a, a, big, a big push towards making them much more uh, participant. Yeah. Now, the, the, the uh, EU policy that has been already approved and at the moment uh, has been implemented in no, a bit unconscious, no, no, a bit patchy. So some, some member states have become more, more details, others uh, just don't have it like the bare minimum. So here is quite important as well how member states <coughs> implement these uh, these policies and into which detail and how far they, they want to go. Mm -hmm. And so far, you know, we're talking about citizens, their own homes, but also schools, business, rooftops, yeah. for instance, can also play a huge role here. Very much, yes. The, the, what is the, the, the third or tertiary sector? Uh, so the, in businesses, like small businesses, they have a, a big uh, role to play. I mean, for large businesses too, but we don't consider them consumers, uh, of course, those are mm -hmm. energy companies. And, um, <coughs> but then uh, institutions too, things like schools, uh, um, sports facilities, and so on. And uh, sometimes uh, they can also join forces. Yeah. So it doesn't can be you know in a neighborhood where both the institutions and the businesses and the citizens get involved. Mm -hmm. So it's not uh, mutually exclusive. Okay, uh, let's get to some of your questions uh, from Surab on LinkedIn. What should we do to incentivize to have more number of prosumers and get them connected to the grid? This is a good point. Actually, I'm glad that she the, the, the mention specifically uh, connected to the grid uh, because one. So the most uh, traditional one will be like the person who gets isolated from the grid and just does his, uh, his own thing. Uh, but here it becomes, uh, well, it can become a bit problematic because at the end the grid needs to be maintained. Uh, so if everyone sort of starts connecting them from the grid, then who pays for the grid who yeah. gets connected? Um, here, uh, and answering the question, a big, an important thing would be uh, well, feeding tariffs. That's one of the main uh, financial incentive. If you are able to um, load the, the, the electricity that, that that you generate into the grid and get a payment from it, then of course this is the most uh, obvious incentive, and, uh, and also for for member states to, to consider this. But there are more as well. There are also other ways, uh, in the other models in which you can operate. Uh, for example, there are some some countries that are now uh, operating on uh, virtual um, uh, metering which means that you can produce in your summer house or, mm. or outside the city, but yet you still get the discounted in your regular energy bill. So this also facilitates, it's not necessarily an economic incentive, but it facilitates uh, getting it. So these, uh, these are some of the things that member states can do and also provide uh, a stable policy framework mm -hmm. because uh, there have been in many countries a lot of changes and, and it creates a bit of uncertainty into people. They want to know that if they invest money, they're going to get a expected return and it's not going to change. So this is also important for countries to develop a stable uh, policy framework that can uh, give security to to, uh, to people who want to become consumers. Yeah, and when we're talking about you know feeding back into the grid and mm -hmm. meter system, I mean, how does that work? Uh, what sort of pricing does a prosumer get back, consumer? Oh, well, it, it depends. It, dep it changes a lot. Depends on the country. Depends on the conditions. And the, I mean, it, it's, it's very very variable. Uh, but uh, usually, or for sure, the prosumers that have net metering, they can also um, put the electricity into the grid. 
and, and get a discount in their in their um, in their bills. Uh, it ranges very much. You know, for example, in Spain, I think it was around zero point two euro uh, per megawatt hour, something around that. But but it changes it changes substantially. And then there is also the issue of batteries. If you have batteries, then you can uh, sort of regulate a bit when and how you put this put this mm. electricity into the grid, also yeah. helping stabilize the grid. Yeah. I think this should also be considered as a public benefit, as should also be incentivized mm. in one way or another. Yeah, because uh, for in wind in uh, wind energy, for example, in Denmark, we some days we have too much energy that we have to use right away because it can't be stored. Yeah. So that's yeah, and then our in southern countries, uh, you get uh, most of the, the, the renewables or the electricity from consumers coming in the middle of the day when it's sunny, but that's one where people are not at home. Yeah. Uh, so then, <laughs> uh, yeah, so then uh, having the batteries as well help uh, stabilize this, and it also provides an additional service to the grid. Uh, here's where electric cars can also come into play eventually when, mm -hmm. when they start becoming uh, bigger. If they are charged or discharged in a smart way, they can also. Um, integrate so back. Yeah, it can also be back, and this yeah. this is part of more of the integrated smart grid yeah. of the of the future. Yeah, yeah, and that's a lot of technology we're talking about, and a lot of batteries, <laughs> a lot of uh, high tech equipment. Yeah. What about the circularity of all this stuff? I mean, it's I'm sure it has some sort of end of life process as well. Uh, yes, well, but this is <laughs> yeah, this is a bit uh, of a complicated, que a difficult question <laughs> for me, but uh, indeed uh, solar panels, they can last for quite a long time, they last up to like 25 uh, years. When it comes to batteries, then the technology is maybe a bit more uh, tricky, it's they're still quite expensive and the disposal is still uh, uh, yeah, a sticking point, I'll say. I mean, I'm not such an expert into the, the end of the of life. But this is an aspect that definitely has to be taken, not just on for consumers, but in general yeah. uh, on, on the energy on the yeah. energy sector. Yeah. I believe that maybe we should do another session with uh, yeah, colleagues sure. that are working yeah. on this specific topic. Yeah. 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 Um, so how easy would it be for an energy consumer to become a prosumer? Uh, once again, it depends a lot. <laughs> it varies a lot. So we say if it's an individual household, then uh, it can go from DIY uh, or, or, or what well, gets some professional who does it for you uh, and arrange it. And then it requires an upfront cost, it requires finding a professional, it requires uh, getting the right permitting and it can be it can be more of a, of a burden, but then it's yours. Um, then there are also more and more companies who are like energy companies who are providing these services. So they already provide um, the, the uh, helping with the financing. Mm -hmm. They they install it for you. They operate it for you, and it may you not, not get as many benefits, but it makes it much easier. And then, of course, the, when it comes to to collective consumers, it depends whether there's a big one or a small one. But for the big ones, it can be as easy as changing your energy supplier, paying a small entry fee, and then that's it. You're a consumer. You're part of a community which is investing in renewable energy projects across the country and providing energy to their uh, to their members. Yeah. So it can go from like very uh, easy to, to much more complex. Yeah, yeah. So it's a very diverse uh, yeah, indeed. field right now. Uh, we have a comment from uh, Thibault. Hello, uh, one day I hope that together we can guard an e equity between nature and us. Indeed, uh, that's what we're working on here at the EA and the EU in general to on environmental issues. Um, there's also a comment about the sound quality, uh, if we can put the microphones closer, so certainly we will try. Indeed. So. <laughs> I hope you can hear us better now. Uh, thanks, that's uh, good feedback. Um, what are the key challenges and hurdles facing prosumers and what can governments do to make us easy as possible? For them? Yeah, well, well, one of the of the main barriers I mentioned before is the, 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 the policy framework. So, sometimes it's not as well developed in some countries depend to, compared to others, or sometimes they develop for certain type of prosumers, uh, most typically individual prosumers, but then there is a big gap or hole into, uh, for, for collective prosumers, there is much more um, and clarity into what, uh, how to how to get together, how they organize, or how they can sell energy from one to another, or share between them. So this is one of the main uh, barriers at the moment. Yeah. And then uh, as well, as we mentioned before, the, 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 the high demand, the, the lack of, uh, of skills is also a, a problem and the lack of uh, expertise uh, in general, not only technical into how to install the things, but also into how to run it. Mm. So you want to create a, a local 
cooperative. Um, you need volunteers and you need the people who know how to do it or, or you need the companies that can help. This is also interesting, a phenomenon we've seen that recently there are more, more companies who are helping to set up energy cooperatives. So they actually okay. help citizens to organize themselves and to get the technical expertise they need right. to become uh, energy energy communities in this in okay. country like in Portugal, for example. Yeah. So that's that's also quite interesting yeah. how the private sector is also uh, sort of like supporting uh, you know, citizen initiatives. Yeah, yeah, interesting. And well, what further work are we doing in this area? Yeah. Well, we published uh, this uh, report uh, that I encourage uh, uh, everyone to, to read and uh, it's available in our website and uh, we're now uh, finalizing in the, in the last very, very last stages of a uh, briefing which focuses specifically on prosumers and cities. So this is a bit more specific into what uh, municipalities and cities can do and what also differentiates prosumers and cities from uh, more um, uh, rural areas. And this uh, will see the light in, I think, in a couple of weeks or so. Okay. Can we have a little bit of a preview? What is the difference? What, what sort of dynamic are we talking about between rural and urban? Yeah, well, there, there, are, there are substantial differences. With urban areas, they're much more compact. So you have much more people in together. There's a lack of space, yeah. uh, which is much more substantial. Uh, but on the other hand, you also have a more compact um, transport system. So it gives the possibility to, to link to uh, mobility, to electric mobility and to district heating too. This is much more common in urban areas than in, uh, than in, in cities. And then, uh, of course, municipalities don't have the, 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 the power to create like, you know, like nationwide policies like countries do, but they do have a lot of influence into how they shape the energy system, how they provide support to, them, to, the, um, to, the, to the citizens, mm-hmm. and, uh, and also even providing uh, land as well, like roofs in their, in their own buildings, uh, administrative buildings and so on. So yeah, there are quite quite a quite a, quite a lot uh, quite a, a lot of uh, characteristics. Yeah, yeah, yeah interesting. Um, another question from Surab: uh, Does peer-to-peer energy transactions have a place in the near future? Can you repeat the question? Yeah. <laughs> does peer-to-peer energy transactions uh-huh. yeah. have a place in the near future? I do believe so. I think this is uh, this is still very incipient. And uh, as I, uh, as, I, as mentioned before, you it's really not the, very the know-how how to. Yeah, well, it's, 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 I mean, it's, it's more like a, of a virtual thing. It's not that you actually send a cable to your neighbor, you know, and, like, uh, and pass the him the <laughs> electricity. But, uh, but it, in, it indeed uh, avoids, so it's, it, it's not like it goes to the grid to a large utility company and then they sell it to someone else. But you actually just like sell it to this person. This can be done in a microwave, so like physical peer-to-peer, but it can also be virtually. And uh, unfortunately, not all the the, 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 the current le- legislation in Europe allows for this. Uh, this is still uh, rather niche, but there are no, there is a push to make it happen. So instead of you just, just being just basically like you can only sell to the grid and you can only buy to the grid, you can actually just buy for your neighbor. And this is already happening in energy communities. Mm-hmm. So you get like in the energy communities where. Uh, yeah, you're sharing pretty much you're, you're, yeah, yeah. You're, you're pretty much like yeah you're generating in general yeah. but you're also so like yeah. sharing uh, sharing it with your with yeah. your peers yeah. but I really I hope that it develops further uh, because I think this will also uh, increase the, the, the possibilities and the different uh, models that consumers can can use and, and can also lead to to, um, um, yeah, to cost reductions mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, just a few minutes left so if you have any last questions or comments please uh, get them in now uh, before we uh, run out of time um, do we know do we have any sort of sense of how many prosumers there are in Europe unfortunately or, we do not know okay how about it where it's more popular and less popular or yes well the, it, it is it is it changes quite a lot between between um, among Europe um, unfortunately one of the main conclusions of our report as well one of our main recommendations is that we need better monitoring yeah we don't really know how many prosumers are in Europe, um, partially because the term is very vague, but also uh, because of the lack of statistics. So now there is a new uh, legislation coming up for part of the governance regulation that will, so EU legislation that will um, force uh, member states to report on certain metrics that can help, you know, like energy producing buildings and so on. But uh, it, uh, it still doesn't offer the full uh, the full view and it, the member states should uh, what they, they would recommend them 
to establish monitoring plans. Uh, so then we get to know how many energy communities are, how much energy they're, pro they're producing, from which uh, sources, also individual consumers, how many individual installations as well. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there are many differences across, across Europe. Uh, countries that have uh, already a very well established tradition of um, of uh, presumption on and, and communities and so on, such as Germany or Austria or, or, or Belgium or uh, uh, Netherlands. So that they are here in, the, in Denmark as well. There have been some that have been from the seventies. Yeah. So those are much better developed. Others have developed quickly over the last few years. For example, like in, in Spain or Portugal, and there are other countries uh, where it has been uh, a bit slower, but it's picking up. Um, for example, in Poland. So they generally, in the, the, the eastern part of central, eastern and central Europe, uh, there has not had a lower tradition on, on energy communities. Mm -hmm. But we have seen in Poland that the self-consumption of individual consumers has skyrocketed over the last uh, few years. However, there's like the community aspect uh, is still not fully developed. So sure. it changes yeah. according to, to different countries, different yeah. traditions, and also different uh, weather conditions. Too. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. Uh, we have a question from Sophie. Uh, would it be possible that the EU makes a comparison between the aids of the different countries of the EU in relation to the types of energy for better transparency? Mm -hmm. Well, this is something that we considered at the beginning of our, of so, our report. Was so to we're actually talk, yeah, we'll talk about subsidies and stuff. Yeah, uh, well, we wanted to look at, at this, but then we, I mean, the, it, it, we're talking about 27 different uh, models, and we thought that this would not be the best way to, to actually put it, uh, put it together. But it will be information that, is, that will, be, it, it will be quite useful to have. We don't have it uh, at the moment in our, in our pipeline to do an assessment country by country of the type of consumers. Um, but uh, we encourage uh, you know, the viewers to, to inform themselves on the, how they work in their own in their own country because it uh, it, it just it's very substantial. Interesting. But I would love to have that uh, that table too. I mean, I, yeah. I would love that we have that as well the, the time uh, yeah. to, to prepare sort of like individual factors yeah. for everyone. Yeah, yeah. And what about uh, prosumerism elsewhere in the world? Do we have any idea if it's catching on? It is uh, well uh, in, in some in some countries more than others, and depends as well on which part of the world. Uh, in some uh, in some countries, it's more about uh, self-consumption, sometimes outside the grid or in mini grids. Uh, think about like that, for example, in Sub-Saharan Africa, this actually uh, renewables have been able to uh, bring uh, just small small systems, oh, yeah. a lot of uh, um, yeah. light to to, pl to places that were off grid or in mini grids. Um, and then similar to more than the European grid based uh, style of when the US has been uh, has been developed uh, substantially also that well, depends on, on, on uh, state by state just to, just to give examples yeah because yeah. It, it, it changes I mean it, it changes a lot from sure. from a small household set this you know for like a TV a fridge and a couple of things more that is a huge improvement compared to not having it just at all yeah. to uh, to other system where it's more about like saving energy bills or contributing to the energy transition so it also yeah. depends on yeah. uh, the goals yeah interesting uh from petya uh what do you see to be the role of business schools in engaging with this topic uh business schools yeah oh this is quite interesting i, yeah. I haven't thought about this uh well i i i believe that uh, they have hmm. They have a double role to play uh, in the sense that uh, they, as I said before, the lack of skills sometimes is uh, is a limitation, not only on the technical school, but also into how they they so like how to operate them, the the community of the model. So maybe business schools can also contribute to other f to in the, in the curricula to other forms of uh, of organizing uh, financially the the. the the communities and the cooperatives as well. Mm -hmm. So I think that that could be one. Yeah. But uh, but that's actually quite quite interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Interesting it's a certain yeah. different area of, of expertise that's needed. Um, uh, one more from Surab. Uh, this may not be under the umbrella of prosumers, but how does energy itself as a currency sound as an idea? Are there any experiments being done on this? And will using kilowatt hours instead of euros or dollars help our ecosystem and the economy? Huh. <laughs> I never thought of this concept, but uh, it's, it's quite, it's quite, uh, yeah, it's quite interesting. Yeah, it could, it could, uh, it could be used at the end of the day. You want something that was changing for something else? I, I, I never, I didn't <laughs> it, 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 consider one. it, but but well, it's uh, it's quite a yeah, it's quite an interesting approach. Good. Well, well uh, so thanks for that. We'll have to come back to you on that one because I think it's it's quite interesting. Yeah. <laughs> An interesting approach. Uh, I think that's all the time we have for today. Uh, thank you, Javier, for joining us on a, what is a very interesting and dynamic issue. 
uh, especially in wake of the energy crisis and what we can do to uh, help Europe's energy transition along. Um, thanks again for joining us today. And if you have any comments or questions still that you want to jot down, please feel free to do so and we'll make sure we'll get them to our expert after the event. And that's it for today. And I hope to see you soon again. Bye. Bye-bye.